only uses seven days. He only uses seven. That's his perfect number. Thousand year days. Day is a thousand years. Now, in Revelation uh, 7, but in the, uh, that is 10 and 7, but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, that's who Christ is, he's the seventh angel, he's the perfect angel, he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished. The mystery of God is finished by the seventh angel, Christ, as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. And the voice which I heard from heaven speak unto me again, and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel, which stands upon the sea and upon the earth. Now God is saying to John, the first overcomer, to get this revelation, you take the book. You need the little book. But here he's saying you have to Pete Ferris right now. Take the little book. Take the overcoming message. It's little. There's few that are in it. Take the little book. And you eat. And you eat. He said John was willing. John, John the apostle was willing. And he said unto me, take it and eat it up. Now remember this is a vision. This is all visionary. This is all a vision. And without a vision, my people perish. I wonder how many people have a vision in our church. I wonder. How many people have a vision? A vision is what you live by. A vision is what separates you from the herd. When I was 12 years old, I told my father, he said, you're going to church. He hadn't yet given me to the ministry he gave me to. And I was still living with my biological father out here north of the city in a barn. I was sleeping in a barn. And he said, you're going to church. I said, Dad, I don't know a thing about the Bible, the church. What am I going for? I'll fix that. Stopped by Pelosi's Drug Store up here. They were selling little Bibles at the time. He bought me a $2.46 Bible. Zipper bound. Black. I still had it. I can't use it. The pages are fall apart. I was 12. That's 69 years ago. He said, now you got it now. What are you going to do with it? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll carry it. I knew he'd put a wallet on me if I didn't. <laughs> my father could wallet me. <laughs> so I brought him to church. And Brother Roberts got up. The old tabernacle across the street. Yes, yes. The sawdust floor. Yes. No ceiling. Hot Sunday afternoon. No AC. Oh, no. Big old fan whirring away in the back. Front doors wide open. And he began to teach on Matthew 5. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the me. And I sat there. And suddenly a voice within me said, underline that. Memorize that. Because you can know this book. I began to memorize, underline. I've got the place for underlining it now. In that old Bible. God can put this word in your heart. Yes, he yes. You can eat this book, Amen. the message of the overcomer. Amen. You can become a child of God. You can walk with God. You can be sanctified on this earth. You can have a vision. And the Lord then gave me a vision. You know what my first vision was? The Lord said to me, this is a special people. And there's about 20 of us in that little sawdust for church. This is a special people. You ask your dad if he'd get a water barrel, because they didn't have any water fountain, and put it in the back of the building, and if he would fill it with water for you, yeah. you would, you would uh, go back and check it and keep it filled, had an outside spigot, and we could go out and get a pail of water. Yeah. And, uh, you keep the glasses clean. Had about 20 glasses. Had no place to sterilize them but the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> and when, 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 when uh, there was more than 20 there, 
you can guarantee some different people to drink out of those glasses. <laughs> but I, he, Brother Robert said to me, he said, did you clean those glasses today? And the Lord said to me, you clean them good because this is a special people. And God gave me a vision of the church being a special people. And I cleaned those glasses because I felt like I wanted them to be clean as they could be. Say, well, I can clean after two or three people and drink out of there. I left that to God. I did what he told me. Remember this. This is a special people. You be careful how we treat each other. We're not just the dirty people out of the dirty alley. God has sanctified us and set us apart. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I look at you as special. I want to be careful how I talk to you. I use you. I don't want to abuse you. Because if I offend one of these little ones, it would be better for me have a millstone put around my neck and be cast in the depth of the sea. Because I know you're one of God's little ones. And the scripture said in uh, uh, verse 8, uh, oh, that is verse 9, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm in verse 9, I have uh, 10 and 11 to go. And I went unto the angel, unto the angel, and said unto him, give me the little book. And he said unto me, take it. And eat it up. Well, the Holly used to say here, our Dutch minister, snickle it up. That's what he'd say. Snickle it up. Take it and eat it up. And it shall make thy belly bitter. Your belly is your digestive part. The word of God that I'm preaching right now is going to make your belly bitter. When you digest it, there's going to be another voice saying to you, that preacher could be wrong. Yes. How do you know he's right? Are you going to put all your eggs in one basket on what he says? Are you going to do what you want to do? After all, you're an individual. After all, you have liberty. After all, you have the right to make a choice. That little voice will be talking to you. Maybe right now. But I can tell you this. I can tell you this. A man of God preaches the word of God. You take the little book, the overcomer's message, and you eat it. In your inward part, it's going to be bitter. But now it sounds sweet when you put it in your mouth. Thank God it does taste sweet. Or I'd never swallow it. But thank the Lord it's honey going down my mouth. The word of God is honey. But when it gets in me, it starts working in my inward parts. It separates. It divides. It sanctifies. Yes. It does the work. Yes. But you know what it does? It gives my Holy Spirit. It gives me the inner man. Christ in me. It gives me strength. It gives me desire. It gives me willingness. It gives me hope. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. You know why it was bitter? Because crucifixion is bitter. Thank God the message of salvation is sweet. Jesus is the sweetest name I know. It's sweet to hear about the things of God. God made it that way. He made it sweet. The sound of salvation. But wait a minute. Next week, when this word is being digested, and you put it into practice, and you're an overcomer indeed, my, 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 I am crucified with Christ. Oh, 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 that hurts, Lord. Why in the world? Why in the world? Why in the world? Why are you allowing me to go through this? What? Lord Jesus, you 
were so sweet when they prayed for me. When they told me about the rose of Sharon, Lily of the Valley, it was so sweet. Oh, 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 oh. Don't, don't tell me back anymore. Keep that spirit on my side. Don't let him nail that nail in my hand. Don't do it. Don't let her put that crown on me of thorns. Yeah. Oh, it's salvation. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. For the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself to me. You know what happens then? You're strong in the Lord. You come out of that crucifixion. It's sweet, it's bitter. It's sweet, it's bitter. It's sweet, it's bitter. The bitter with the sweet. My God. Where are you, Satan? Like the mouse that got drunk on the wine spill. Got up on his hind legs and said, Where are you, tongue cat? That's what you look at the devil and say when the Holy Ghost is running through you and the power of God's with you. Praise the name of the Lord. There's life. I passed that test. How'd you pass it? The Spirit of God let me pass it. Such an honor you really blessed me. Yes. <laughs> she come down here Sunday, it wasn't Sunday a week ago, or I wasn't here a Sunday a week or two. Was it two weeks ago? A week, uh, a week ago or so, she came down here. Brother Marlow, I don't know if I can make it. I just don't know. I have done everything. I have prayed. I have believed. I have trusted God. I have done everything I can do. I said to her, Sister Naughty, today is the beginning of a new day. Amen. Just when you think you've hung on all you can hang on. Just when you think you've gone as far as you can go. That's the moment. I think when they turn that furnace up and put Shadrach, Meshach, and then they go in there, I think they, God let the heat get to old Shadrach, and he was wondering, are you going to save me now? But just thank you. The fire was licking up around his face. Didn't even get the smoke on him. Didn't even praise the name of the Lord. How many have come through a trial lately? and found out even the smoke's not on you. But you've got the victory. I said you've got the victory. Praise the name of the Lord. Let me ask that again. I'll leave all that that again. How many have come from something in the last few weeks, months, uh, and you don't even smell the smoke of that? You've got the victory. You can lift your hands uh, and praise the Lord. Give him the glory. Give him the honor. Somebody give him the praise right now. something, I don't know. He was sitting there chomping down on a sandwich and he said, I'm ready to go home and praise God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You know what we do? We have a tendency to give up just when God is going to give us a victory. Amen. I do, you do, we all do. Because we're 
weak in the flesh. Thank God. There is therefore now no condemnation. Romans 8, chapter verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Praise God. Just get that next verse on there, Steve. Hold it on down. Praise our God. Amen. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ, Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Verse 3, for what the law could not do in that it was weak to the flesh, God, everyone say the rest of it with me, but God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Next verse down, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Woo! Praise the name of the Lord. Let's give him a shout. Let's give him a shout on Sunday. I need a power-filled shout. I need a Holy Ghost shout. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes! This sermon started in the Spirit. Remember, just before the midnight hour is dark, just before dawn is dark, but the dawn always comes. There is a beautiful thing happening in the church. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I'd eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. Praise God, praise God. Yes. Amen. Well, I think it's been a good day. Yes. It's been a good day. I think the Lord has really made a significant step in our church. Look around you, see what God is doing. 